search the four corners of the UK to find the fastest, toughest, most agile and most accurate young athletes from Scotland, Northern Ireland, England and Wales. Now the search is over. Nation will battle nation over six matches to win points in an epic sporting tournament. The top two teams will go through to the grand final. Only one will be crowned Ultimate Sports Day Champions. Let the games begin. Ultimate Sports Day, Team England take on Team Wales. Representing Team Wales, it's their captain, Joe, Isabel, Jacob and Hannah. And here's their mentor. He's got his eyes set on the London Olympic Games. Superstar sprinter, Christian Malcolm. Welsh sprinter Christian is a former Junior World Championships double gold medalist. In 2010, he won bronze at the Commonwealth Games and silver in the European Championships in the 200 metres. And representing Team England, their team captain, Alan, Shanice, Leo and Emily. And championing them, their mentor, sure he's won world medals in the decathlon, He's also a total wipeout champion. It's Dean Macy. <laughs> Dean is one of England's most successful athletes, having competed for over 10 years in the decathlon and winning gold for England at the 2006 Commonwealth Games. That is our teams ready for action. Why don't we crack on with the competition? Skywalker. Our teams will start at the base of their five-metre towers and then climb their way, completely unaided, right the way to the top. They'll then balance their way across that beam, pick up their three medals and then hang them on the bars above before releasing their flag, bearing their team colours and hanging all the way safely down to the bottom. So, who have Christian and Dean decided to walk the sky for them? First event today, we have Skywalker. Um, we're going to have one per event and that person I picked is Isabel. I'm Isabel, I'm 15 years old and I'm from Bridgend in Wales. My speciality is athletics. My sporting hero is Jessica Ennis. Emily, you're up, girl. My name's Emily, I'm 13 years old. I come from Tavistock in Devon. My sporting speciality is triathlon and my sporting hero is Alistair Brownlee. Your challenge starts on the fourth and final beep. Let's play Skywalker. <laughs> This is an incredibly tough first challenge that tests both strength and balance. Here we go. Izzy and Emily must use every ounce of their power in their legs and arms to haul themselves up those towers. And these two are off to a flying start. Sprinter Izzy and triathlete Emily neck and neck as they approach the top. Now they've got to be careful here. If they lose their balance and fall off the beam, they're out of the game. Now they've got to reach under that beam and pull up one of those medals. They're worth five points each, and there are three medals for each team to collect. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done, Just keep it going. So, Izzy's the first one to her feet. She just needs to stay calm, hang that medal, and there they are, the first five points for Wales. Emily's also up, but she's not looking as steady. She's a bit more wobbly than Izzy. She's trying to hook that medal onto the bar, but when you're more than five metres up and on such a narrow beam, to stand up straight and raise your arms fully above your head isn't easy. Izzy's fishing around for that second medal, and it looks like she's got it. But wait, Emily's finally managed to get that medal onto the bar and pick up five points for England. She's left herself a lot of work to do now, though, as Izzy is already back onto her feet and working herself confidently towards that bar. And there it goes, another five points for Wales. Awesome effort. Can Emily catch up? The look on her face says it all. She knows she's got a lot to do if she wants maximum points for England. But remember, it only takes one slip up and your opponent could be out of the game for good. Emily's already got the next medal, but Izzy is looking for her third and final one. Emily's looking a little unsteady again. She's teetering on the edge. And oh! 
Emily's gone. She's fallen. She's fallen off the beam and out of the game. She has indeed seen the dark side of the Skywalker today. Oh, she looks gutted. Well, that means that Izzy can carry on at her own pace. The pressure just slightly off. She's got the final medal. Just the flag to go for the final 15 points. There it is. A maximum 30 for Wales. Well done, Izzy. Well, after a close start, Emily lost some ground. And in her rush to catch up, she lost her balance and fell off that narrow beam, leaving Izzy an uncontested leap to victory for Wales. That was incredible. Izzy, you were like a gecko up a tree in the Amazon there. Did you, did you find that easy? Um, bits of it, but balancing wasn't easy. Christian, hey, perfect start for Wales. Oh, fantastic. I'm, I'm so proud of Izzy, the, the job she's done today. Good start, win the lead, so uh, let's, let's hope it continues. You're doing well. Hey, Emily, you were awesome up that tower as well, but a little bit trickier up on that balance beam. Talk us through it. It's really hard to balance when you're up there, and it doesn't look hard, and you think it's going to be quite easy but when you got there it's just unlucky it wasn't lucky you still did get a medal for your country as well though dean you've got to be proud of her look let me tell you these guys have been through so much over the last couple of weeks and there's a few things over the last couple of weeks i would rather have done for them this ain't one of them though i was so <laughs> nervous for them well you both racked up points today congratulations to you let's see how many points you've got let's check out the scoreboard Wales are off to a great start with a maximum 30 points after just one game. England managed to pick up one medal, so they score five points, but there are plenty more points still up for grabs. The Chaser. Ahead of us is 150 metres. An Olympic sprinter can cover this distance in around about 15 seconds. But can our two nations run the length of it before the Chaser tracks them down? If they do, they pick up points. It's simple. But if the chaser beats them, then they're out of the game. So all we need now is the chaser. Who is the mystery chaser? That I can't tell you, but I do know he's fast, very fast. First to face the chaser, it's the boys. Taking to the starting blocks are Jake for Wales, Alar for England, Joe for Wales, and Leo for England. They've all been given a head start and they'll need it as here comes the man to beat. It's the Chaser. With his terrifying turn of speed, this man is more machine than mortal. Set! And they're off. A great start from all the boys, but an even better one from the chaser. He is hot on their heels as they take the corner. Joe on the outside there looking strong for Wales, with the other three looking fairly level, but the chaser is starting to gain on them now as he hits his stride. Joe is way out in front looking safe. His teammate Jake, though, is looking vulnerable. And oh, he's caught him. It's all over for Jake. He zooms past Jake just meters from the finish line. The other boys just make it with Joe coming in first, Alan second, and Leo third. They all get 10 points, but nothing for Jake. Looking at the replay, Jake just didn't have enough left in the tank for those last few metres. The chaser overtook him running at full tilt and nearly caught up with Leo too. A narrow escape for England. <laughs> Let's take a look at the scoreboard. A maximum 20 points for England, but even though Joe won the race with a great time of 18.09 seconds, he still only gets 10 points for Wales. That means that overall, England has 25 points, but Wales are still in the lead with 40 points. The gap is closing. Bungie Basketball. <laughs> right, um, that's not how it's done. That's which of our ultimate sportsters will our mentors pick to play Bungie Basketball? We need two per event for this. So two people I've put, chosen today. Joe, my captain, and Hannah. My name is Joe. I'm 15 years old and I come from Llanelli in Wales. My speciality is rugby and my sporting hero is Dai Green. My name's Hannah, I'm 13 years old. I'm from Neath in South Wales. My speciality sport is sprinting and my sporting hero, of course, is Christian Malcolm. Allard, mate, you absolutely smashed it in practice, OK? So you're in. And Shanice, I know you said I need one more chance to nail this. This is your chance, OK? I know you two can do it for us. You've got to work as a team. My name's Allard, I'm 15, I'm from West Cumbria. My speciality is hockey, and my sporting hero is Rob Warner. 
My name's Shanice, I'm 14 years old. I live in East London. My speciality is basketball and my sporting hero would have to be Usain Bolt. OK, your challenge starts on the fourth and final beat. Let's play bungee basketball. <laughs> The boys will jump first, then the girls in this tough game that involves stamina and accuracy. They've got to land their basketballs in one of the three hoops facing them, exactly as Allard has just done there for England. He's got a basket in the highest hoop, so he gets five points for his team. The other hoops are worth less, three points for the middle hoop, and two points for the lowest and easiest. Here comes Allard again, he shoots, he scores! Five more points for England, Dean is delighted. And now Joe gets his first score, a three-pointer for Wales. Joe did brilliantly with a three-point hoop, but Allard was just going for the high five-pointers, which proved to be a top tactic as he put in basket after basket. Despite Joe's best efforts after four minutes, he was never going to catch Allard, who scored a mighty 14 hoops, meaning that England scored 70 points to Wales' 33. Well done, Allard. He said he might fill it up. He nearly did. Good work, mate. Good work. In round two, basketball player Shanice took on sprinter Hannah, and both of them scored early on. Shanice struggled to climb up that cargo net, but Hannah was on fire, much to Christian's delight. Oh, well done, Hannah. Hannah managed to steadily fill the two-point basket, gradually increasing her score, while Shanice struggled with her aim. In fact, it wasn't until the very end of their four minutes that an exhausted Shanice found her aim again when she scored another three-point basket right on the buzzer. But it was too little too late. Her two hoops meant only six points for England, whilst Hannah's seven hoops scored her and Wales 15 points. Well done, you. Thank you. So, when we had the boys and the girls points together, Wales scored 48 points in bungee basketball, but England picked up 76, which means they come from behind to lead with 101 points to Wales's 88. Let's see if there's any tactical planning going on behind the scenes. So, guys, a few of us had a go at the bungee basketball. Yeah. We keep going like this, we've got it in the bag. I yeah. think we're doing awesome. Yeah. We were unlucky with our not our faults. Both of you did extremely well, really well. Yeah. Let me tell you this, right? Allard, I know he scored a phenomenal amount of points. We couldn't have done it if it weren't for you. Shanice, on that, she gave me a pull and a half. I mean, I, I was so surprised how, how much she actually pulled me up. I mean, it was a real help. And we just we got the points on the scoreboard and we're up there. I'm quite confident, actually. You've got confidence now from watching everyone, haven't you? Yeah. You can't wait to get out there. They fear us. Do they, Christian? I tell you what, they don't look scared. Three, two, one. England! Push a war. Test of strength. I'm going to have to go with my two biggest athletes on this one. I'm going to have to go for Joe and Isabel. Every single team wants to win this, and I've picked what I consider my two strongest athletes. And Allard, Shanice, that's you two. Again. <laughs> Pressure war. It's a simple game of strength. Our two teams of two will try their very hardest to push this rather heavy looking block to the edge of the platform, therefore pushing their opposition onto the crash mats below. Your challenge begins on the fourth and final bleep. Let's play Push a War. Come on, guys. A real test of strength and power this game. Allard and Shanice on the left for England, Joe and Izzy on the right for Wales. Ten points up for grabs for each round one, and the first team to take three rounds wins the game. England have a slight edge on Wales at the moment. They are digging in their heels and gradually knocking Wales back bit by bit. England are still pushing hard, but Joe and Izzy are holding them right on the edge of that platform. Joe looks like he's tiring. Allard can sense victory. One more push and it's all over. First, 10 points to England. No time for resting in this game. It is straight into round two. And this time it's Wales on the offensive. They've gone for a big early push, trying to catch England off guard. But Allard and Shanice digging in deep. They've managed to halt to the onward advance of the Welsh. Oh no, Shanice has slipped. She's lost her footing and fallen over, leaving Allard to take the strain on his own. Could this be a chance for Wales victory? Oh, she slipped again. 
That is not good for England. Izzy and Joe are desperately shoving, trying to take advantage of England on the back foot. But Allard and Shanice have made an awesome recovery, actually gaining back some lost ground now. Allard literally putting his back into it. Izzy and Joe have got to dig deep if they're going to avoid another loss. Shanice making up for some of those slips earlier, putting everything into that last push. And there it is. Wales crash to the floor. Another 10 points in the England bag. So, if England win this round, then the game is over. Wales need to pull something special out of the bag if they're going to come back from this. But it's not going to happen. A huge push from England right off the start, and they secure a 3 0 whenever Wales are push a war. Dean is a happy man. England, you guys just pulled that strength out of the bag. In that second one, how did you bring it back? It's just teamwork. I mean, you know, if one of us slips, the other one just takes an extra, an extra person. It hurts, but we do it. All right, nice one, England. Wales, commiserations, three to nil. Izzy, did you think you had them at one point? It felt close, but then we tried pushing and pushing, but it wasn't going anyway. So it was close, but then they had it. Don't worry, we can pull it back. There's still plenty of time for that. That is the word from Christian. Let's see who's going to pull themselves up that scoreboard. A magnificent effort from England means they score 30 points in Push of War, with Wales failing to get any points. Overall, that means Wales stay on 88, but England have extended their lead to 131 points. Spin shot. So this game's easy enough. You catch a ball, you kick it into the goal. Or miss it, like I did. But why is it called spin shot, I hear you ask? Well, there are a couple of other elements to this one. You've got to do it whilst on the spin and trying to avoid these very annoying arms. Just like that. But let's hope our ultimate sportsmen are at least a little bit better than me. Who have Dean and Christian chosen to spin into action on this one? The main person in this one is going to be you, Jacob. This is where your skills come in. My name's Jacob, I'm 13 years old. I'm from Pontypool in South Wales. My speciality sport is hockey, and my sporting hero is Christian Malcolm. Leah, you wanted this game yesterday. You've got it, all right? You need those football skills today. My name's Leo, I'm 13, I'm from Essex. Speciality is judo, and my sporting hero is going to have to be Dean Macy. First, doing his best Gareth Bale impression representing Wales, it's Jake. Both teams will have a very helping hand from their teammates. Let's get a spin on, shall we? Jake has 60 seconds to score as many goals as possible in the two goals on either side of the turntable. He's missed that one, so now he has to take a shot at the other goal. Oh, off the bar. It's not easy trying to shoot and avoid being knocked over by those rotating poles, you know. That's another miss for Jake, but there is still plenty of time. Hannah throws him another ball. He shoots. This time he scores. It's three points for every goal, and Jake is off the mark. He missed that time, but he's just got to keep going. Another strike, and that one's in. Two goals for Wales so far. Jake is not hanging around. Another shot hits the target, and although that bounced out, it still counts as a goal. So, three goals now for Jake. and looks like he's found his rhythm. That's goal number four. He catches the ball cleanly and shoots and scores again. Goal number five. This is much better. There's another goal. Six now. After a slow start, he's really racking up the points for Wales now. Can he get any more in the dying seconds? Yes, he can. That's goal number seven. Time for one last shot before the clock runs down. Yeah, that's a miss. A valiant effort from Drake. Seven to beat. Up next for England, it's Leo, who leaps that beam effortlessly, shoots and scores. Can he do it again? No, not that time, but that's a good shot. One more goal for England, and Leo is off to a terrific start. He misses the next one. But that's a cracking shot from Leo. Three goals to England, or should I say four? There's no stopping him now, as he launches another shot that finds its target. That one's just got to drift slightly right of the goal. And, oh, no, he's dropped the ball. Shanice just needs to adjust her aim a bit. Better throw from Emily there, and that's a good shot. Goal number six for Leo. He shoots again. That shot was just a bit low. That one, however, was good and brings Leo level with Jake's score of seven. Now he's got eight, and he's in the lead. Another miss, but that won't put him off. He ducks under the beam, shoots, and misses again. He's straight round for the next goal for another shot, though, and that one counts. Leo takes his tally to nine goals. Correction, make that ten. Can he go higher? Yes, he can. 
Oh, and he even sees another goal in the dying seconds. So, Jake scored seven goals, which means he earns 21 points for Wales, but Leo's 12 goals translate to 36 points for England. Overall, the scores now stand at England 167, Wales 109, but there are still plenty of points up for grabs. The Chaser. Well, the chaser's ready to run. Our girls will need to run like the wind if they're to reach the finish line before he does. The girls will be given the same head start as the boys, but will it be enough? Settling into the starting blocks are Emily for England, Isabel for Wales, Shanice for England and Hannah for Wales. They must sprint around the 150-metre track and reach the finish line before this man, the mystery chaser. And they're off. A great start for Hannah in lane two and Izzy in lane five. Both girls flying around that first bend. Shanice is hot on Izzy's heels, but Emily in lane one looks like she could be in trouble. The chaser is making incredible headway and has Emily in his sights. As they fly down the home straight, the chaser is gaining on Emily. He's going to catch her and he overtakes her. It's over for Emily. Safely over the line in first place as Hannah for Wales, followed by teammate Izzy and Shanice comes in third. The replay shows us just how much ground the chaser made up, overtaking Emily easily. But he wasn't quite quick enough to catch the others. Hannah, Izzy and Shanice all safely across the line. He's, he's pretty fast and then when he's getting close, because he's an Olympic athlete, he could just start jogging and just like keep you under pressure, just be staying right behind you until the finish. So the race is over. Time to update our scoreboard once again. Hannah's incredible time of 17.72 seconds, the fastest today, means she gets 10 points, as do Izzy and Shanice, who also beat the chaser. So, going into the final game, England have 177, but still in with a chance, a Wales with 129. It's time for the grand finale, the team relay. This whole arena will come into play, and it's going to get frantic, and it starts with bike power. A 200 meter sprint will then light our towers over here. Once it's fully lit, it's time to initiate the Skywalker. Our US teams will start all the way at the bottom, make their way up the five meters across the beam and collect all the rings they can before making their way down the ladder. And then, time to get a sprint on all the way over to the bungee tower. And they'll bungee like they've never bungeed before and collect all three rings. Not before they've done that can our cyclists make their way right back to the other side of the arena. It's gonna be tough. I'm making a sweat and I haven't even done anything. Once they've had their 200 meter sprint, only then will their teammates make their way to the top of the flagpole, collecting their rings in the process and releasing their national team's colors. It's time for Ring Relay. OK, Christian, your team ready? They know what to do. They're ready. Awesome. Dean, England in the zone? Well, if they're like me, they're nervous, but they are ready. OK, the relay starts on the fourth and final beep, guys. Best of luck. <laughs> this is the last game of today's tournament, but with up to 105 points up for grabs for the winner, Wales are still in with a chance to beat England. Hannah and Chinese are looking after the first leg of the relay. They have to pump those pedals until they've cycled for 200 metres. You can see how far they've still got to go on the bars at the bottom of your screen. Chinese has done it. It's off to her yellow marker now so that Leo can start skywalking. Hannah's also finished her leg of the relay and released Izzy, who is desperately chasing Leo up the towers. It's neck and neck now then as they haul themselves out onto that narrow beam. And Izzy is just pulling ahead of Leo now, grabbing onto those rings effortlessly. They must pick up all the rings on that bar before they can progress onto the next stage of the relay. And everyone they successfully hold onto scores five points for their team. Leo's grabbed his rings too, and now they have to carefully load themselves onto the ladders dangling underneath them. Izzy there straddling the beam with her legs and edging across. Leo just using the strength of his arms to shimmy across the beam and onto that ladder. Fantastic tactics there from Leo. Well, let's put England back into the lead. Get your feet in. Leo rings, mate, rings. 
Dean having to remind Leo to grab the rings on the way down. Very important that, as they can't continue without them. And they're worth five points each, by the way. Leo hits the ground, releasing Shanice, who runs off to the bungee, where Allard is waiting. Is he still descending that ladder? Allard, though, wasting no time in bouncing down and grabbing the first of the three rings he needs for England. Is he nearly down now? But Allard is stuck on the net, relying heavily on the team reserve Jack to pull him up. That's given Wales a chance to catch up. Joe launches himself at the rings, but he just misses. Allard got his second ring. He is going great guns for England now. And there's one for Joe. He grabs a ring, but he is one behind Allard. Allard wants one more. And there it is. He's got his third ring. Joe has second. And once Allard's back on the platform, Shanice can race back to her bike for another session of furious pedaling power. Shanice sets off again on another grueling 200 meters on the bike. But here comes Hannah for Wales. Joe caught up some time on the bungee, and Hannah is only just behind Shanice now. Come on, Hannah. Keep it going, Hannah. Keep it going. Keep it going. Look at those bars at the bottom of the screen. This is seriously close now. Hannah's doing a great job to catch up with Shanice. But it looks like it's going to be Shanice to finish first. There it is. And she tags Emily for the last leg, the flagpole. She's got to get up that pole as quickly as possible, grabbing four rings on the way. Jake is right behind her, though. This is going to be tight. Who's going to make it to the top of the pole first? Will it be Jake or Emily? It's Emily. She leads to victory. What a race. It couldn't have been closer. It's England that get the 50 points of victory. Fantastic finish. England pick up 50 points for the win, plus another 55 points for all the rings collected, making a total of 105. Wales collected all 11 rings too, so they pick up 55 points. So the final scores look like this. Wales 184 points, but England victorious with 282. It doesn't get much closer than that. Your team looked like they had it, but then the Welsh came right back at you, didn't they? Oh, you know what? It did. It literally came down to the flagpole. Jacob and Emily, the two smallest people in this competition, and how they get up to the top there with no fear and dive off, it was absolutely fantastic. My throat's killing me. Both of these teams today have competed and, and shown so much heart. It's been a pleasure to be and a pleasure to be their mentors. Hey, Christian, commiserations, mate, but your team, Wales, have done absolutely incredible today, haven't they? Oh, no, they've been absolutely fantastic. You know, it's been so close. And, you know, as much as I don't like to lose to the English, it was very good. The guys fought all the way to the end. You know, I can't ask no more for them. They, they put everything in there. I'm happy with them. Hey, on to the next one. So, after the first match, England topped the leaderboard with 282 points. Join us next time on Ultimate Sports Day when Scotland take on Northern Ireland. The CBBC Half Term Mega Mix. Three, two, one. <laughs> We've got it all. Massive talent. Thanks. All your CBBC favourites, plus brand new future hits. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. That's wicked. The CBBC Half Term Mega Mix. <laughs> the fun starts Saturday from 7 on the CBBC channel.